mount it to brick. You put it on your kitchen counter. See, there you go. I've got the switch right here, but normally when you're coming down the stairs, you want to go through this door, and by the time you get into the doorway, you remember that there is no light switch and you've got to run back around. So what I want to do is be able to control these lights from multiple locations. Now normally, you could install something called a three-way switch. That would mean we'd have to upgrade this existing switch, add another wire between here and the alternate location. That's a lot of work and time, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to get not just a three-way switch, but a five-way switch without any additional wiring. We're going to do that by installing a brand new smart switch. Now smart switches aren't new, but typically they've got one major problem. If you put them in, you can control that light switch from somewhere else, but you always need to use an app. What I'm going to show you in this video gives you another switch from a different location. That gives you the ability to control that switch just with a button. The system I'm going to be installing is called the Lutron Cassetta or Caseta system depending on how you say it. But the reason I like this one is that it doesn't cost a lot of money to get into. If you've just got one switch in your house that you want to replace, all you've got to do is purchase a simple starter kit and then you're ready to go. When you first buy the system, you're going to get a control module also called a hub along with a switch. Now they make different versions depending on what you're going to do. I'm going to be installing just a simple switch. This has an off and an on. There's no dimming because here I'm controlling multiple shop lights off of this one switch and I don't really think they're supposed to be dimmed. But if you're going to put one of these systems in a bedroom or your kitchen, they make a version that also has full dimming abilities. Let's get it put in. I'll show you how simple it is and what you can do with this remote control and the final result. Now the first thing you want to do with any electrical project is you want to find the breaker that controls your lights. Now our power is out. We'll start by removing our cover plate. I'm also in the process of renovating this basement. This paint is pretty beat up and I don't really like the color. I'm also going to be changing the color of these outlets. We're going to be switching them over to white. Now even though I think that the power is completely off in there, it's a good idea to use one of these inductive testers. I'm going to start by putting it inside the box. You can certainly use power tools here as well. And we'll double check our wires before we go any further. Now we are not seeing any power. Now another tip with these pens is always put them in another place that you know the power is on just to make sure they're working properly. This is just what's called a single pole switch, meaning there are just two wires. We'll just undo our two connections. Finally, we can remove our ground screw. Now we've got our new smart switch. They include some wire nuts and some screws. There's directions and everything in there. Now this particular switch just has an on and an off. They make many models that include dimmers and fan controls, but for this one, I just want to be able to turn these lights off and on. Now the one difference with smart switches is you'll see that you have a neutral wire. You don't have any neutrals on your old switch. It's very common. However, in the back of our box, we can see that there are neutrals there bundled up. Now you could certainly try to straighten these out, but at this point they've been bent around and I have lots of wire to work with. So I'm just going to cut off the absolute end. You don't want to waste any. And we'll strip the ends of our two huts. Now because there's already a bunch of neutrals here under this wire nut, I'm not going to cut all these neutrals. It's just a lot of extra effort that I'm not going to bother with. So we're going to match the white to the white. And we are going to reuse that wire nut that's there. So you will want to try to twist this one into the existing pair if you can. And then we'll see if this wire nut catches. You definitely want to make sure that's on there good and tight. Now that is the hardest connection that we're going to make there because we're using a wire nut and we can actually push that right back in our box. This box is going to be a little bit tight because it's a junction box, but I think we're going to have enough room. Much easier because we're going to use a Wago connector. Just simply lift the tab on one side. It's critical that you don't strip too much insulation. You're only going to strip a small amount for these. The other great thing is this is stranded wire. Oftentimes when you're connecting stranded wire to solid like we're doing here, it can be a mess. These Wagos make this super easy. Just flip them up. Now we'll connect our next hot wire, put our Wago right on. Now we can connect our red wire. Now many folks don't realize that the Wagos work just as well on the ground connector. Now this one is way too long. We'll trim that down. Now we'll put our ground wire in place. And that's all there is to it. 
The directions recommend that if you're not using this blue wire, which is only if you're replacing an existing three-way switch, that you cap it off. So I'm going to trim that, cap it with a Wago. The reason you're doing this is just so that it doesn't short out on anything else. Now this is going to be a tight fit in this box. Sometimes it's helpful to bend them. Okay. And unfortunately, that should do it. I think we're in good shape. You want to level your switch out as best you can. Now we've got our brand new switch installed. Now we're going to go into our Lutron app. Settings, add device. It's going to ask you what kind of device you're adding. In wall switch. Press and hold the bottom button for 10 seconds. Our light is blinking quickly there. You can pick a name. I'm just going to say basement, I'm going to say storage area. You have ceiling, spotlights. I just saw the lights went out as it said adding device. Now when I see basement storage area, I can hit the button on my app, off or on, lights are off, turn them on. The response time is phenomenal. That's one of the things I found with Lutron is whatever protocol or communication system they're using, it's basically instantaneous, but we still haven't gotten to this. This is our remote control that we want to install so that we can now run this switch from another location using just a simple button. It's already got a battery installed. We're just going to go back into our app. I'm going to say add another device. Except this time we're going to say we're adding a Pico remote. Same thing, press and hold the bottom button and it already picked it up. Now we've just got to tell it where our remote is located. We're going to say basement, same thing, storage area. We can control our basement lights. Now we've got our new switch. But let's go over to the other door. This is where we wanted to have some lighting control. So now with this remote, they're already on, it includes this little sticky tape on the back and you could certainly stick it right here. Some people put it on their bed headboard, you can put it in your car. What I wanted was this remote to act just like a three-way switch and I don't want it disappearing. So I want to mount it on the wall and they've really come up with a clever way to do that. This is a wall plate bracket kit. They've actually got a piece in there. Now this does have a battery in it. It will last for years, but eventually when you need to replace it, you've got to be able to get it out. So it just slips right off this. This will act as our three-way wall switch, but now we can install this directly into our wall. And because there's no voltage involved, we don't even need to use a normal electric box. I'm actually going to use a low voltage box and put it right in the wall to make it look just like a normal switch. And it's easiest to kind of wiggle the saw in a little bit to start your cut. Hello. I have a little bit of give with these boxes so you don't have to be 100% level. Now we've just got to tighten these screws and that'll fold up our wings. Now our ring is really nice and tight. Just like a switch you've got two screws on the top and bottom. If your box cutout wasn't perfectly level it doesn't really matter because you can level your switch tighten them up and now all we've got to do is put our trim plate on but you can already see our three-way switch is already working with our wall switch plate so guys i'm taking this back off the wall to show you one other thing you can do with this bracket i didn't actually have to cut this box at all the reason i did it was i had these on hand and these are really good and solid if you're going to be mounting these permanently this will hold it tight and you won't have to worry about these screws getting stripped out but if you don't want to do any cutting at all, the simplest method is to just screw this bracket directly to the wall. When I put the plate on, it will sit flush to the wall. So you have the ability to install one of these anywhere and still have it give you that kind of fixed built-in look. You just use regular wood screws with an anchor. You won't see anything and it still will give you that built-in look. Last question is cost. To get one of these starter kits, there's around $110. Now at the beginning of this video, I told you it was a five-way switch, but it's actually more than that. The first way you can control any of your lights is of course through the master switch, turning it off or on. 
The second way is through one of the remote controls. The third way is to use the scheduling system. Once you've got this app going, there's no cost to do any of this. You can actually schedule different lights to turn on at different times. The fourth way is to use their motion sensing system. Now I don't currently have any of these things, but they make these motion sensors that you can put anywhere you want in your house. That means when you walk by, you can trigger an action. So you could have a light turn on inside a bedroom or a closet or even in your entryway. The fifth way is to use geolocation. Now when you get say close to your house, you can program this thing to automatically turn all your lights on so that as soon as you arrive home, everything is set exactly how you want. And the sixth or bonus way to control your lights is to use something called scenes. You can set one button to do different things. Meaning if you want to have a movie mode, you can push that button and it will activate multiple lights, set them to the brightness you want. This is something in the old days with home automation that was really expensive. So with our switch plates on, this thing is not only looking good, they're working perfectly and I know I'm going to love this thing going forward. 